ये जलसा हमारा ये दिन बरकतों के ये जलसा हमारा ये दिन बरकतों के We get speech about the prayers, about the ibada, about the supplications. How mutual man for connect himself with his own loving God. We beloved Khalifa, we beloved Master. He don't deliver but few sermons this year and last year about salat, about prayer. Luckily, we get the blessing of our brother from UK, Dr. Zahid Khan Sahib. who done a wonderful scholar in uk jamaat and volunteer for the jamaat professionally na medical doctor for the for the well body of the teeth a dentist but every amal if i learn islam every amal if i be scholar so would i request dr zaid khan make him come and deliver the speech about the importance of the prayers and since this is a very important speech would i request pasi se to translate in timni and also we we request uh, somebody also mr maulvi mohammad latif bhaiya to translate in mande when this part a talk when he deliver the speech اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اتل ما اوحي اليك من الكتاب واقم الصلاه ان الصلاه تنحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله most respected uh, mr chairman amir sahib amir jamaat sierra leone most distinguished uh, guests on the head table distinguished guests from sierra leone and from around the world my dear brothers and sisters it is uh, indeed an honor for me to be among you and a great privilege to be addressing you on a subject that is so so important for each and every one of us whether he is young whether he is old whether he is a man or whether he is a woman This is also as I found out the theme of your conference because if you look at the program that you have in front of you the logo is on as-salah the prayer and also on the backdrop that we have on the stage this is the primary focus the actual reason what we must think about in this uh, jalsa salana We have listened to a most eloquent faith inspiring address before me by uh, brother Yusuf Kome a most eloquent address my address will be not as eloquent as his but i have he has talked about all the ills of social media but the good thing is that i have the answer how to remove all of these social ills from our society 
and I hope that what I shall share will become practical part of our life so that we can see the society around us become pure, become clean, and become peaceful once again. A few days ago, I was back in London in my clinic working when respected Amir Saab telephoned me to say that if I would speak at the conference, I hesitatingly agreed. And the only reason I agreed was because the Holy Quran says, Atiullah wa atiu rasul wa ulil amri minkum. Obey Allah and obey his messenger and those who are in authority over you. We are most fortunate to have an Amir who looks after every interest of our life. He looks after the interest of every person in Sierra Leone. And therefore, he felt that this was a subject that we should uh, discuss together so that we can change our life, importance of prayer. So obeying the Amir, I agreed, and I hope that what I say will be of some use to each and every one of us. Let me start by explaining Salat. As you know, it is a pillar of Islam. A pillar is part of a foundation of a building. In this case, it's the pillar, a foundation of our beautiful religion of Islam. Along with the other pillars of Islam, the kalima, the zakat, the, the fasting in the month, and the pilgrimage to the house of Allah, all the pillars are equally important. And we cannot become Muslims if we forget about the importance of each and every one of them. If one of those pillars becomes weak, we see cracks appear in that pillar. It puts more pressure on the other pillars. And gradually, gradually, one by one, surely, all of them start to crumble and with that crumbles our faith. So that is why each and every one of those pillars is of extreme importance to us and something that we must always bear in mind. Salat, however, the prayer, is very special for many different reasons. For instance, the other pillars have some conditions attached to them. For instance, fasting in the month of Ramadan, Allah in the Holy Quran tells us that fasting in the month of Ramadan is not compulsory on everyone. If you are sick, or if you are on a journey, or if you are unable to fast, then you do not have to fast in the month of Ramadan. Similarly, for the pilgrimage, there are conditions that if the passage is not safe, if your health is not there, if you cannot afford it throughout your life, then you do not have to go for the pilgrimage to the house of Allah. The same is the case with zakat. There are some conditions, and only if you fulfill those conditions do you have to pay zakat. Prayer, salat, is different. There are no conditions like that. Each and every Muslim, as I said, young, old, man or woman, it is his, her responsibility to make sure that they are regular in the worship of God through the five daily prayers. If you cannot say Salat standing up, you can sit down and say the Salat. If you cannot say it sitting down, you can still say it by lying down. So Allah has made these provisions 
that no matter what, no matter what your physical, medical condition is, Salat has to be always performed five times a day. My dear brothers and sisters, there is another reason why this pillar of Islam, Salat, has so much significance to us. It was in the fifth year of the prophethood of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the command for Muslims to observe prayer was received. It was given by God Almighty. It was given in some very special circumstances. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was taken on a spiritual journey, the Mirage. He was taken by the angel Jibrail. He was taken to the heavens and he went step by step from the first heaven upwards to the seventh heaven. And at one point, even Jibrail could not go beyond that point. And he said that I cannot go beyond this. But the Prophet was to go beyond that, the seventh heaven. And it was there that our dear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was alone in the company of God Almighty, that he was given the command that Muslims should pray. They should pray 50 times a day. That was the first command that was given at that time. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then descended to the sixth heaven where he met the Prophet Musa Alayhi Salam and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what command had been given to him for the Muslims. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied that God Almighty Allah has said that Muslims should fast 50 times a day. But Moses said to the Prophet وسلم, that your Ummah will not be able to do this. So you should go back, you should request the Prophet, you should request Allah Almighty that He should make something easier for them. So eventually, Allah decided and commanded that Muslims need to, uh, to pray five times a day but those five times a day will be like 50 times a day so the reward that one will get will be like saying 50 prayers during the course of the day so this pillar of islam is special from this very reason as well whereas the command for all the other pillars of faith was given very much differently so that should make us understand that this pillar of Islam, because of all of this uniqueness, we will always have to keep in mind so that when we think during the course of the day why we should be praying, then we should be thinking of these very important things. The Prophet Sallallahu in his, to his companions, how did he explain the importance he explained it in very simple terms. He would tell them, can you survive without food or drink? Will your body still exist if you don't get food and drink? Because the body cannot survive without food and drink. And he would tell them that the same is the case with Salah. Your soul cannot survive without the Salah. It becomes dead. So that is the importance of Salat is to keep your soul alive. And he used to tell them that a house in which no Salat takes place becomes a deserted place. It becomes like the graveyard. It becomes dead. So our houses, in order to keep them alive, we must make sure that we say our Salah in our houses as well. The Holy Quran in many places describes the importance of Salah. 
and the verse of the Holy Quran that I have recited, I will just use that as one simple example. Allah says, recite that which has been revealed to thee of the book and observe prayer. The prayer surely restrains one from indecency and manifest evil and remembrance of Allah is the greatest virtue and Allah knows what you do. Chapter 29, verse 46. Today, around us, not here only in Sierra Leone, but around the world, as we have just heard from our distinguished speaker, Yusuf Komesai, there is evil around us. And we see that everywhere today. Even the Honorable Minister for Health and Sanitation yesterday he talked about the problems in society that they are encountering. And he talked about the punishment that people found guilty of these crimes would be sent to jail for a long time. But I believe that prevention is better than cure. So we have to prevent people from committing those offenses in the first place. And as the verse of the Quran describes that Salat protects you from indecency and manifest evil, these are two of the evils that we find in society today. A Muslim has to take precautions. He has to keep clear. And it is only Salat will, will protect us from these wrong things. Because Five times during the day, at small, small intervals, we have to prepare for the Salah. We have to perform the Salah. And after that, we have to contemplate as well. So it pulls you back at regular times from during the day. It pulls you back from anything evil that your mind might be thinking about because it is the time for the next prayer and that is how prayer protects us from indecency and manifest evil. This is a great benefit of Salat. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also used to beautifully explain this to his companions because he asked them once, if one of you had a stream of water at the back of his house, and he washed in that five times a day, would any dirt be left on his body? The companions replied, O Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how can any dirt be left on one who washes himself five times a day? So the Prophet explained that this is the case with prayer too. One who performs his five daily prayers there can be no dirt left on him too. This is the most effective way that our master, the Holy Prophet wasallam, used to explain to his companions. Let me explain it from another angle too, because man considers what is important to him is the life on this world. This is what we find generally around the world. So that when someone receives an invitation from a king or a ruler to attend for an audience with him. That man is overjoyed. He's very happy. He prepares himself. He makes sure he is presentable. And he makes sure that he attends that audience with the ruler on time. He makes full use of that opportunity. And at the audience with that king, he makes his requests of his needs and hopes that the ruler will grant him his wishes. If you're invited back, you prepare and you go again just as happily as you did the first time. But we know that there is another majesty, another Lord, not a Lord of just this world, but a Lord of all the worlds. He is the Rabbul Alameen. To him belongs the power and his power is not limited and his treasures can never be exhausted. He too holds an audience 
Not occasionally, but he holds an accredited audience every single day. Not once, but five times a day. And we are all invited to this audience. This is the beauty of Islam, that we have direct connection, relationship, communion with the Lord. And we do not need a translator. And he understands all languages. So why? Do we miss this golden opportunity? We must run for that audience and then take full benefit of the presence, of our presence in front of the Lord. We all stand in need of things. And when we have the audience, it is then that we have to ask him. Thee alone do we worship and thee alone do we implore for help. This is how we ask of his help. Allah says, Fazkuruni azkurkum, therefore remember me, and I will remember you. What a great thing it is that the Lord of all the worlds, he remembers each and every one of us who remembers him. Salat is so important, and like all other deeds, there are two angels who are recording our actions on this world. And on the day of judgment, when we are called to account before God Almighty, it will be Salat on which we will be judged first and foremost. If that is found in order, then we will be successful. So that is something that we must always bear in mind, that we prepare not just for this world, but we prepare for the hereafter. The promised Messiah and Mahdi alayhi salam, he was sent in the latter days according to the prophecies of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He came to once again present the true teachings of Islam, the beautiful teachings of Islam which man had forgotten. And he gave us the teachings that our master, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had bought for them. He said, the Messiah Mahdi alayhi salam said, I have been sent so that the gap, big gap that has appeared between man and Allah, I should bring back man back to his creator. That bond, that connection, that man should re-establish that connection with his creator. And the most effective way of reconnecting with Allah the Almighty is through our Salah. This is why he said that my community should become regular in their daily prayers. <coughs> and only then can we be considered to be different and better than other people. In these last three days, we have spent time together we have heard faith-inspiring addresses. All the previous speakers, starting from the Friday sermon of the Imam, through all the speeches, Salat, the prayer, has always been mentioned because it is such an important part of our life. Soon I will be returning to the UK. I will miss the sunshine, but what I will miss even more will be your smiling faces. I will miss your kindness, the kindness of our, our respected Amir and his family and all the duty holders of Jalsa. How you have given me honor wherever you have met me with smiling faces. But one thing, one thing that will make me happy, overjoyed, is that you not only remember the importance of prayer, but you bring a change in your life and you become irregular in your five daily prayers. This, my brothers and sisters, is the true jihad. This is the jihad that the Prophet ﷺ has told us about. Not the jihad that we see in many parts of the Muslim world. Misinterpretation of Islam. But this is the jihad. We must cleanse our bodies, we must cleanse our souls, and we cleanse them through this important institution of Salat. 
I started my speech with obedience, and now comes the practical test. Are we truly obedient or not? Our beloved Khalifa, may Allah strengthen his hand. If you remember, in the last almost 16 years, every speech, every Friday sermon, every address, every class that he takes, what is that subject that he discusses? Every time he discusses about Salah. Because this is the passion. This is what is in need of today, is that we become regular in our Salat, in our homes. We teach our children. Sometimes it is the children who teach the old. Sometimes it is the man who teaches the wife. And sometimes it is the wife who teaches the man. You must encourage, help, assist each other to make sure that we become regular in Salat. The Khalifa loves the people of Africa. He loves the people of Sierra Leone. And his wish is that Muslims, Ahmadis here, as elsewhere in the world, become regular in their bond, in their communion, in their direct link with Allah the Almighty through the five daily prayers. We have prayed together here. We have prayed tahajjud prayers together. But as soon as we go, then we should not forget them because then we will be amongst the losers. If we are to be successful in this life and in the next, whatever we have learned here in these three days must become part and parcel of our life. If you want to make the world a more peaceful place, then for the entire mankind, then we need to reconnect with Allah, and this will be through prayer. But our prayers have to be done with the proper dignity and the proper way of doing it. Once a companion of the Prophet ﷺ was saying his prayers, he finished. The Prophet said to him, go and say your prayer again. The man said his prayer again. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him for the second time, no, go and say again and for the third time. He said, Prophet وسلم, I do not know how to pray, please teach me. The Prophet said, your prayer was too quick, it is not worthy of acceptance. You should pray slowly and then it will be accepted. So this is the type of prayer that we must do. So this is my message to you, that prayer is the food for our souls. It is the way we will survive and become successful. May Allah always help us in this jihad. May we always be obedient to Khilafat. May we always be obedient to the Amir here so that we too are successful. And then only then can Islam spread and the true teachings of Islam will spread throughout the world. I hope that I and you will join together in this jihad and that we will always remain steadfast, dedicated, to the institutions so that we can continue to flourish and expand throughout the world. Wa akhiru dawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Yaha asmani gajar baj raha hai Phalo se uluhi shajar saj raha hai Nae phool har shakh par khil rahe hai